Well, no promises. <laughs> it's like, I'm not crying. Really? I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Common Table. We are having a, a special conversation today. Before we get started, we just wanted to open up with a word of prayer. So Chris, I'm gonna invite you to do that. Yeah, sure. God of grace, we just give you thanks for, for time to be together today uh, for the conversation that will happen and for the ways in which we can inform uh, what you are up to and the way that your spirit is humming through our story. God, just be with us in, among, and through the conversation. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get started. everyone and welcome to Church Online. We are excited to have kind of our, our bonus, I, I'm going to start calling these table talk oh, services, good. right? It's the, So, pause. Yeah. Martin Luther used to have table talk conversations in the pub. And so I think that there's some some books uh, like that have been written about his table talks. Oh, man. And, and the, the conversation as it goes kind of kind of gets a little bit less focused with every pint that he would drink. Anyway, that seems so, right. That seems right. <laughs> so the longer we talk, awesome, the more rabbit trails we will be under. <laughs> that, is, good. that is always true for our conversations. Right. Oh man, that's so great. I didn't even know yeah. that. So welcome to our first table talk. Uh, my name is Ben Trawick. I am the campus pastor here at The Common Table. And this is Chris Bishop, lead pastor at Faith Point United Methodist Church. Thank you for yeah. joining me today. We are going to take some time as we've kind of been spooling up into this common table thing, um, transitioning from Faith Point Online to the common table, uh, where we can invite everyone to the table uh, and worship together in this online space in a way that's non-threatening. And we always have a seat available for the person who wants to come and sit and join the conversation, yeah. grow with us, and become deeper disciples. And part of that thing that happens around that table is we all get the opportunity to share our stories. Yeah. Uh, and that's a really, it's a really powerful thing because our stories inform, our stories inform our own faith journey and how we right. encounter the world. And getting the opportunity to hear other people's stories can help to inform and shape the parts that uh, aren't part of our experience, right? Right. Which is, which is super cool. And it just, stories are such a powerful thing. Uh, so today, as we, as we come into this space, we're going to be talking a little bit about stories, about our stories, and we are here at... We're at Middletown United Methodist Church. That's right, where, where a, lot, a pretty formative part of your story yeah. takes place. So go ahead and take yeah, it away. So, so actually, we're standing in a sanctuary right now um, that, that there's a picture that my parents have that crop up from time to time or that we'll see in um, history publications where um, I was... I was I was about this this big. No, I was like like five or so, barely able to hold a teeny tiny size shovel. But there was a groundbreaking like for this space that we're standing in. So my my story has been informed a lot um, by this space in place, and in particular by the people that have have been gracious enough to let me stick around long enough um, to do that. And so I kind of wanted just to take a few minutes because I do think, like Ben said that when we share our stories, something happens where we either hear echoes of our own story or we see the way that God is working in all people in a bigger way. Um, and so we understand and then make, make more room at the table uh, for conversation and understanding so that we can all grow. And so, you know, this, this was my church home for forever. Like I had not known another church and you, had bounced around yeah. from church to church to church, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and so even, even in the way that we may look fairly similar, right? Um, and of course you shaved, so wow. you're out of the beard club for now, but. Gonna revoke my membership. <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. That's fine. Um, but, but you know, that, that even, even growing up, bouncing from congregation to congregation for missional purposes mm -hmm. or um, remaining in a church, we can still hear echoes of the way that, that we understood church to be. And 
one of the things that, that I tell about my call story and coming to um, hearing the call to go to ordained ministry, you know, I'm down the street actually like like three or four blocks and there's this stoplight and I could turn um, right to go to the river where I was working at the time as a kayak instructor, uh, raft guide and everything else. In, in, when I tell it because I'm preaching, I make it sound very alluring, okay? Uh, and then I could turn left and I could go and, and do church. And at that time I was um, doing youth ministry and then preaching on occasion. But, um, but the reality is, is that there was really no choice because the way that the, the faith community had been so gracious in, in lifting me up and raising me up, I was just thinking on the, the drive over here about how um, they were such a permission, or it is a such a permission-giving congregation. It was the first time I played uh, drums in a band, and I'm really still terrible at that, but I, I played for, for a year or so. Uh, they're even with a broken wrist after snowboard accidents, right? Like, yeah, uh, and I think that made it better because I couldn't hit as many wrong <laughs> drums. But like, you know, that was the first time that I had sat in front of a soundboard or um, led anything, and it took me from being just a kid to giving me some pretty formative identity. And it wasn't because of, of all the things that I brought or because my parents were members or because I just stuck it out, right? It was, it was because they were willing to work with me and, and see something of sacred worth in me that, that allowed, allowed me to keep plodding through. And then uh, my first job was here uh, as, a, as a nursery daycare worker after school my senior year. Um, so I didn't want to sit the bench on the soccer team my senior year. So I decided to, to come on over and, and work. And that turned into just this heart for, for the church and, and loving the church. And it doesn't mean that there wasn't hurt or, or heartache at times. It doesn't mean that it was always easy, but but even in the midst of me screwing up, you know, it was, it was this congregation that kind of helped get me back to where I was and, and learned that kind of that love so that when I went to college um, and, and faith kind of had to be on its own, right? Like yeah. there's this kind of, I had to get up, I had to do the things in, in high school for, for a good chunk of it. Um, and then I had friends who were, who were primarily Baptist and um, Presbyterian. And so it was a little different but always coming back to the understanding of the church was always a place where I could call home. And I always cherished that in my story because I never had a, um, I was dealing drugs on the side of the road in Middletown, Maryland, as the tractors passed, right? <laughs> um, right. But, but I never had that kind of, I was doing really, really, really bad stuff. And then in an instant, I changed it all around. Right. And sometimes you feel like your story isn't good enough and what I have come time to, you know, in, in reflecting that there are a lot of small steps for my story and that's okay. Just like if there is a moment for you, that's okay too. But our and stories can inform one another and that everything that we have done has led us to the place where we are and that God can use those stories, whether it be stories of brokenness or stories of just kind of like me, just doing, doing the things to be a good kid and then God kind of getting God's mitts on you, right? right. And doing something different. Um, even one final note about this space and thinking about how, you know, I've preached hundreds of, of messages from, from this space. I have led youth groups where we, we talked about prayer as napping. And so there were kids sleeping all over this space or transforming it into a prayer labyrinth. Like, like there is history here for me. But one of the things that, that as I look past our camera right now, I see some, uh, cameras mounted on the back wall. And about 10 years ago, we developed a way to live stream and to, to record from this space. And so in some ways, what the common table is now was birthed out of this space because that's part of my story. And so our stories are important as we come to the table, not just to, not just to kind of showcase what we've been up to, but more importantly, what God's been up to in us. And then also that we can use one another um, in a way that glorifies the kingdom. So Ben's got some, some conversation about what might that look like for us. That's right. So thank you so much for, for uh, sharing that with us. Um, yeah, and at, at the common table, we want to be able to uh, be a church that provides that same kind of community that you were talking about that you had growing up, where we have opportunities to 
grow together in those stories as we share them, but also fail together and, you know, go through hardship together and um, try things that we get to try and then say, well, that, that was not for me. I, right. you know, whatever, whatever that may be for each I, one of us. I feel like it's so much easier too for us that like if we experiment and we learn from that, but then for us, we could be like, oh, we just lost that file. Yeah, I don't whoops. know what happened uh, there. I guess that one's not going on, right. on the internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, so what we want to do is specifically this summer, but, but moving forward at the common table is we want to be able to share the stories of the people that are here because those stories are important. Yeah. Without them, we all kind of sit with our own experience because of the way we do online church. We are kind of alone and together at the same time. It's that weird thing of being between screens from each other. Yeah. Uh, so if we have the opportunity to share our stories with each other, we can connect in a more meaningful way and we can learn from those stories and we can grow from those stories. So whether they're stories of this incremental faith that's built over time or these like, you know, shocking moments in yeah. our lives that, you know, we have those come to Jesus moments or whatever, whatever you want to call them. Um, we want to be able to share those stories. And there are a couple of you that I know have already told me that you have stories to share and even sent me stuff. So I have not lost those and I have not forgotten about you. So I want you to know that straight off the bat. Uh, we've got a couple of these that are just about ready to go, yeah. um, which is awesome. Uh, but we want to make sure that everyone is welcome to this. And we want you guys to be able to share with your local church communities and other faith communities yeah. that we want everybody to come and share the stories, whether they're regulars here at the common table or not. Um, this is a place where we want to kind of collect those stories of what it means to try and follow Jesus, right? Because yeah. that looks different for everyone. And it's amazing to share in those experiences. Um, Paul Varga, who is one of our lead worshipers here at the common table pretty regularly, uh, has a story that he wanted to share. And so we're going to use that kind of as a little example to give you an idea of what this can look like, but also understand that this is Paul's story. Yeah. And so your story may be very different, um, but we want to be able to basically have you record a video or even only audio if you're not comfortable with the video part. And uh, we'll take that and work with you to m build that story into a story that we can share here. So I just want to show you a quick little example of Paul's story to show you what we're getting at. Hey everyone, uh, as a, yes, uh, I am Paul Varga, master of dad jokes and of life in general. <laughs> as much as possible, I guess. Um, great to be back here on the common table. Last time I saw you, I think I might've been wearing the same sweatshirt. Um, so uh, I swear I, I change sweatshirts, I do laundry. This isn't just some, uh, this is just an awkward coincidence to, to be perfectly honest with you, but no awkwardness uh, today because I know I'm amongst friends and you don't judge me even if you think I don't do laundry. Um, but in any case, um, I am so glad to be here today. And uh, I really the thought behind me speaking today is, is to talk about my faith. Um, and if I were to title this story, um, the title would be "My Faith Is a Mistake," um, and and not a bad mistake. Um, probably one of the best mistakes I've ever made. I made a few pretty gnarly mistakes in my life. Um, some have had worse consequences than others, um, but my faith is one of those mistakes that is fantastic. Um, that is, as Buzz Lightyear would say falling with style um, and uh, it is certainly um, what happens when you have faith um, by mistake is is that it makes it even more special uh, because you have this story that backs it up so I'll kind of rewind and, and kind of go from there so growing up I uh, was in a household that was filled with domestic violence um, my father uh, hurt my mother um, with his fists, with his feet. Um, he hurt us, my my sister, myself, and my mother with words and, and taking emotions and weaponizing them, um, worse than any chemical or biological weapon that you could ever think of. Um, 
And to make matters worse, um, he's also a pastor. And so um, that causes some issue when in the morning on Sunday, you hear from the pulpit words of love and, 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 and amazingness. And then on, in the evening, you hear on that same day words of hate and hurt and um, anger. And um, that's real confusing. And it, and it makes you uh, question faith. And it makes you question God. Um, and it puts you in some dark places where I went to. Um, dealing with, uh, we're dealing with this. I've obviously am a little hefty. <laughs> what, I, it is, what it is, I, I mean, I eat my feelings. I, I mean, I have this thing where I, I binge eat, right? Um, and I have these other flaws in my life that anxieties and depressions and, and um, subject to mental illnesses and things along those lines. And, you know, through all of this, um, my faith has allowed me to um, get lost, but also be found again. And um, I was talking with my mom recently, and this is why I say my faith is a mistake. And she was talking about how surprised she was that um, my sister and myself have any relationship with God at all, that we have faith. And she's surprised that we do. And I th was thinking about that, and it's true because we were impacted by every worst thing. I mean, um, you know, my father, we told people about him and the higher ups and they swept it underneath the rug and they didn't give us the support that we needed to get out of this situation and that, that easily could have given me an excuse to just shrug off God for the rest of my life um, but because I I'm a mistake in, in the sense of that I'm a good mistake um, and that I am um, my faith is a good mistake allows me to turn that around it allows me to live my life freely and openly and allows me to be a better father um, where I can look my little daughter in the eye and I can say, Jackie, I love you. And God loves you. And I can do the same for my wife and I can do the same for my mom. And I can do the same for everybody in my life. Um, and that is the best mistake. And that is something that is beautiful. Um, so I wanted to share that a little bit with you. I wanted to share my story. I hope you take a moment to be able to share your story. Um, know that you are not a mistake, even if your faith is a mistake. Um, and that's why we're here at the common table. Uh, thank you for allowing me to tear up and uh, share this with you in my happy birthday balloon, which is my lard and it stays around forever. So thank you so much for that. And I look forward to speaking more with you and hearing more about your faith stories too. I gotta tell you, Paul is one of my favorite people and I really do thank him for, for sharing his story. And I hope that you uh, found that to be a blessing and also an encouragement that you can, you can share your story too. Just as a reminder, like Ben said um, a, a little bit ago, that if you have a story and you wanna share that, he is amazing. Like he is a storyteller by trade and we just get to have him as our campus pastor. And so, um, if you have audio, video, if you have something that you think is a thing, I don't know how many times I've, I've sent him messages or something like, Here, here's what I've got, can you turn it into something? And it's always incredible. After looking at what you have, uh, he'll go out and shoot and polish and, and showcase really the best of what we can do as telling stories together and see how those weave together um, in, in that community. So if you're, your local um, congregation or your local context doesn't allow for that, please, if there are young people that wanna share their stories or you know somebody, please send it out. And then the goal being that we kind of have this go-to resource bank for our communities, for, for Faith Point, for your place of worship, for anything that we can then draw on as that, co that common table that allows for resources to be shared because we don't wanna hoard them. Um, and same thing goes with any of the messages or something, let us know, reach out to Ben um, and get some of those resources so that we can continue to be the, the people that God is calling us to be because we have spent years trying to, to cultivate a community that is open and, and willing just to share the gospel with everyone. And so as, as we do that, as we talk about that common table and bringing together people um, and having fellowship and discipleship, Ben's got a really good idea about a next question that might help us uh, build on that a little bit more. Yeah, um, thank you, by the way. Uh, and just to reiterate, yeah, if all of you, if all, of, if all you have is an idea, 
that is enough. Yeah. So please, yeah, just send that over and we can, we can figure that out. And all of these resources are great for sermon illustrations and small group conversation right, right, starters right. and all of those things. So uh, if you need any of that, maybe we should, we should really get a directory up online of what's available. That's just happening right now. We should yep. probably talk about that when the camera's not on. Well, anyways, but you mentioned- Ben will definitely do that. Yeah. That I have a great idea for a question, which I, I like the way you said that, because what I don't have is an answer. Right. Um, but I have a, a, something that we want to talk about as we gather around this table and have conversation. Yeah. You know, so a lot of the imagery that we use is that, that dinner table, right? Mm -hmm. Where we gather as a family for a meal and, and sit around. And one of the things that we do as the church when we gather for a meal is communion. And that has proven to be a very difficult thing to do in this online space. Right. Um, there's a lot of challenge. There's a lot of pushback because of the way we practice that sacrament. It's really hard to do when we are not gathering together in person, right? Yeah. Um, so I am especially curious, and Chris is too, that of, of how we might approach communion online, what that might look like, because it might look very different from the way we experience yeah. it when we gather together in church. Um, and I'd be really interested to hear from you what that might look like to you or what suggestions you might have, or if, if you even think that that is just completely impossible yeah, and, yeah. Or, or completely impractical, um, whatever that may be. I want to throw that question out there and let's have a little conversation. We can get started in the chat. If you have uh, really, you know, if you have a lot of thoughts about it, you can always email me at ben at faithpointum.org and I'd be happy to have the conversation there as well. Um, yeah. But I think it's an important conversation that we can start talking about um, to kind of start to get our heads around what that might look like. Yeah, and, and I think that that we've we've danced around, or I've had pretty heated conversations with people um, early on, and and they are very passionate that like there's this one thing, and excuses as to why we can't are pretty good. Um, well. They have a lot of excuses, but but none of them I think hold hold weight about you know well, well online's not true community or or whatever or this or that, and and for me none of those are good enough for believing that a God who is who is within time and space can't transcend a screen or two. Now, I don't have an answer, right? Like, That's I, the, yeah. Neither I, of us. I don't have an yeah. answer, but I know that the some of the some of the excuses, not reasons, but excuses. Um, coming from folks who aren't part of online communities, um, they they don't seem they don't seem to be the thing that would stop us. Mm -hmm. So, what would it look like if we we come together? Uh, and maybe maybe a good place is to say, what what is the meaning of communion for you, and how might we come together in celebrating that online? Or no, it's it's completely heretical, and that's okay too because we are trying to trying to work this out, but. As that conversation goes, you can email us, you can, you know, let's get that going in the chat uh, and and kind of have that conversation. But I did want to close us with a word of prayer yeah. um, while we while we come together. And just as a reminder um, that, that as we have conversation in all the ways, we assume grace and that we are not punks. Yeah, and I think right. that those are two good ones um, to kind of help us love our neighbor, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's go to God in prayer. God of grace, I thank you. I thank you for the space that we are standing in, um, whether whether it be in a, a church that holds so many memories or whether it be at our kitchen table or on uh, on our way to the next thing, God, that wherever we might be, like so many times in scripture, you remind us that it can become holy ground, God. And so allow conversation to, to billow, allow us to continue to be those people who are willing to take a seat at the common table and allow for us to then fill that table with the fruit of, of following you and what that might mean. God, keep us safe, keep the conversation rich and allow us to continue to seek that next faithful step. It's in your son's name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Chris, awesome. for being here for the conversation. Thank you, all of you, for being here for this conversation. We're excited to hear, start hearing your stories. Um, let's, keep the, uh, let's keep the talk going in the chat about that communion question. We'll keep that going for a little while longer here. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and sign off on the video for now. So thank you all again, and we'll see you next time at the common table. Thanks.